before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. My name is Bobby, and I talk to dead people, but not in the way you might think. For as long as I can remember, I've been interested in graveyards and often wondered, who are the people buried there? What are their real stories? Join me on my journey to bring people of the past into the present, digging through the mysteries to uncover the truth, allowing them to tell their stories through me. My name is Bobby, and I'm the Crazy Grave Lady. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm so excited for this episode, the first of many with the crazy grave lady, Bobby herself. How are you doing today, Bobby? I'm doing great, Bryce. Thanks so much for having me on today. I super appreciate it. Oh, I love it, girl. I First of all, let me, you guys, Bobby just opened up her channel. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys. Actually, when she signed on, I was in the middle of watching her <laughs> latest episode, but I'm going to put this down in the description box below you guys. So you guys make sure you go and subscribe to Bobby's channel because Lord have mercy. I think this is one of the best ideas I have ever heard for a YouTube channel in my whole entire life. In fact, Bobby, you just did the media course with Jay and me. And when I first got into contact with you and was prepping you for the course and I found out, I sent you all those questions and I found out what you wanted to do. I told Jay, I was like, damn it. That is such a good idea. Cause you're kind of like me. You're a little bit of a Nancy Drew yourself, aren't you? Yeah. I, I'm kind of a nosy new new and I like to live vicariously through dead people. So <laughs> yeah. Well, that's your opening clip, right? You speak to dead people, but not in the way that most people do. So what what do you actually do, Bobby? What, what's, what's your channel based around? Well, I like to do research on dead people. Um, I like to start from birth and go all the way to the grave. Um, my niche is I like ancestry records. And that's kind of like what I like to do in my spare time. I started with my own family. I started researching my own family, learning about my own family tree. And so I kind of like to learn about people's stories. I learn about who they are from birth. I look at their birth records. I look through newspaper articles. Um, sometimes I might find stuff on them in books. Um, I look at census records. And then sometimes I take it all the way to the grave and look at their actual cemetery plot. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, that's such, I mean, and I've had those thoughts too. Like you go into to cemeteries and you walk around and I mean, I love cemeteries as well. I think cemeteries are beautiful and you walk around and you look at some of these um, tombstones and you'll see like born 1896, died 1936. And you're looking at this person that in a name you don't know. And you're wondering like, who was that person? Like what, 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 what did their life look like? And so you're not like looking for like famous people that we all know you're going into these graveyards and finding these graves and finding the grave and then going and doing the research on who this person really truly was in their life. And so it's bringing somebody back to life and allowing them to kind of tell their story, which is most of the time just forgotten, you know, it's, it's, um, and, and no life deserves to be forgotten. And so it's so freaking fascinating. I'm going to tell you guys, just kind of a spoiler. I know I've mentioned on this channel before that I recently found out that one of my great great grandfathers haunts some locations in South Georgia. And so Bobby has been doing research into my own family line 
down in equipment that I don't know much about. Um, so that's going to be an episode coming up because it, it takes patience, doesn't it, Bobby, to like dig through these records and dig through. It does. Um, I've actually been researching people in my family for close to 20 years and still don't have some of the answers. I still cannot find the grave of my great grandmother. I've just recently found out some of the details of her. It took me probably about 10 years to find her first name. Um, people in my family never had it. So that took some time. Um, but yeah, it does take patience. It does take a lot of digging sometimes. But when you find out stuff, the reward completely outweighs everything. Um, to give you an example, this picture behind me, I found this in the basement of my father's house. I think this is a relative of my mother's, but I haven't pinpointed it yet. I still don't know who this is. You know, it's so it, it's so interesting you say that because we do. I think we're so spoiled nowadays because everything is so documented and everything is so. Oh, did I lose you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think I froze. I I'll just keep you. talking. If Oh, there we go. I'm back again. <laughs> it's, it's the freaking. Well, it's Mercury retrograde right now, guys. So yes, it is going to be messing with us. And I also got the lovely construction workers that will probably be the death of me that have been building a high rise next door for a very long time. But um, my. Uh, you know, it's frustrating. I have a great, great grandmother who immigrated over from the United Kingdom when she was nine years old. Now, she was the offspring of one of the royal family members, direct descendant of Queen Victoria. And her move moved to the United States at nine with one of her governesses required her to change her name. Um, and that's all we know. So I know who her father was. The whole world knows who her father was. I'm not going to say it out of respect for my siblings and my cousins, but her, I, I don't know. I know who her daughter was because that was my great grandmother. I know who her son, her grandson was because that was my grandfather. But I, I don't know if her name was Mary or Martha because she was born with one name and then changed to another name to hide who she actually, but they could do that back then, right? Like they could change their identity back then very easily. They didn't have the type of paperwork we have now, do they? They so, don't. They don't. They, they, and a, and a, sometimes things will actually get lost. Um, yeah. We've had courthouses that have burned down. We've had courthouses that have been flooded. And of course, we have records that just mysteriously vanish. So sometimes those things just disappear. And sometimes it's a lot of it's just putting those paper trails back together yeah. to try to find those things. Or it's word of mouth from your family to put yeah. those things back together too. Well, with Mary Martha, whoever she was, um, I, that was word of mouth for a very long time about a family secret. And it wasn't until somebody was moving furniture in my family and a bunch of letters fell out of an old secretary that we were able to put all the pieces together of who this person was. And then when I stupidly to 23 and me, my boyfriend was like, MI6 is going to show up at our door. <laughs> so, I was like, there's a reason why they changed her name. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But that's kind of, that's what makes history so fascinating to me is that they were able to, to move around the world in a very different way than we're able to move around the world today. They weren't watched like we're watched today because they didn't have computers. They didn't have scanners. They didn't have chips. They didn't have social security numbers. They didn't have any of that stuff. And so, and I often say too, you know, we have so many things in our world today that distracts us like TV, YouTube. Thank you for watching you guys, by the way. <laughs> we love our YouTube. Um, our channels. <laughs> yes, yes. The only thing you should be watching are our channel. I'm just kidding. Um, we had all these things. At, we have all these things today at our beck and call to entertain us and distract us. Back then, they didn't have much to distract them or entertain them. So there was, they were doing a lot, weren't they? They were getting up to some mischief, weren't they, back then? Oh, they were. They were. Um, and it's, it's amazing how many things were so culturally the same in different countries, but you didn't know it because the, the countries didn't communicate. But right. you read different newspaper articles in different places, and they really were the same. And that's yeah. what to me is fascinating. I never liked history. And I don't know about you, Bryce, but 
if you would have asked me when I was younger what my favorite subjects were, history were not was not it. Oh, uh, that was one of my favorites. So I dig this shit. <laughs> history and science were not my favorites, but now history and science are right up there with me. It's these are the things that I that I enjoy. English, I loved it, but yeah, history is yeah. these things, are, and it's probably because these are the things that they they mean more because you get to learn them the way that you want to. Well, you see them through a human's perspective, a human eyes. And I think that's actually why I did love history, because I would sit in history class and be fascinated by, and who knows if our history is accurate or not, that's not the point of this video, but what they would teach us in history about events that happen, and to imagine experiencing that yourself, it's a choice that people had to make, you know, I often thought of that, you know, that story that they tell us about the United States is accurate. I've often wondered that, like, what were my, or your Bobby, or any um, American that's not, quote unquote, native, um, what, what decisions did, those, did our ancestors make to actually get on a boat and come to a world they'd never seen before? You know, um, that's, that's a huge decision. And I think, um, you know, a lot of my, I know that my, my mom's moms, the Stroms, the, the line where Strom Thurmond, his, his line, they were German, and we have a book on them because of Strom Thurmond. We there are books on this family, guys. They were peasants. Like they were not, you know. That's the only reason why there's actually books on this side of my family is because of Strom Thurmond. And who, if you guys don't know who he is, he 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 passed away recently. But he was a well, what in like the last twenty years or so, he was the longest running senator. Still holds the record as the longest running senator the United States government has ever seen. He was from South Carolina. Strom uh, is my grandmother's maiden name. Bryce is my mother's maiden name. That's a big thing to do down here in the South. So that was my grandmother's cousin. And I actually, my, I have some gifts that were given when I was born from him. So it's, it's, he's a big deal in the United States history. So that's the only reason why the Strom family has books about them. So that I'm very lucky that way that I can actually read very well-written biographies on the Strom family. And they were peasants. They were, when they were in Northern Germany, they were the Wundstroms. And it was because the Edict of Knots, which I've talked about on my channel before, got revoked by the Sun King, by Louis the the Fourteenth, meaning that um, Henry the Fourth of France, when it switched from Valois to the Bourbon line, created the Edict of Knots, saying that certain people and territories would not be persecuted for being Protestant, meaning they weren't going to be beheaded, tortured. And then when his whatever, how many g generations down, grandson Louis the Fourteenth revoked that. All of a sudden, Protestants were now able to be legally tortured again. And so the Wundstroms, my line, had to make the decision with no money to get on a boat, poor as hell, like in the bottom level, which a lot of people did not survive that, what, three-month bo bo boat journey. And they landed in what was called Charlestown, South Carolina. It's now Charleston, South Carolina. And the reason why they picked Charlestown is because it was owned by the English, and they had built a brick wall around the city so catholics couldn't come in this was before the american revolution and so even though they couldn't speak english they only spoke german they felt safe and protected and i can't imagine i mean northern germany is not the same weather as charleston south carolina is it bobby no, no not at all no. they walked from very clear crystal clear kind of coldish weather to walking into muggy heat where there was malaria we had, used to have malaria there was yellow fever, all sorts of stuff going on. And they actually ended up helping build. And they weren't taken in the census for the first few generations because of their not, not being English. And they, it took them a while to learn the English language. And the city of Charleston actually went back and put a plaque up dedicated to them, probably because of Strom Thurmond, <laughs> because of uh, basically honoring them for the work they did to, to, to build the, the city of Charleston. They were just not acknowledged back then because they were peasants. And they built their fortune and built their life here. And that's what's so fascinating to me, Bobby, as an American. I think a lot of, to really, you know, I often thought if somebody, if somebody did not get on the boat when he or she did, I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be here today. And those choices that people make, how it affects, karmically affects future generations. And that's what I used to think about as a child. Like, Wow. You know, if, if, if Louis XIV had not revoked the Edict of Knots, they would not have left Germany. And I wouldn't be here in this body. And that's what's wild to me. And you can, you probably see that in your research, don't you, Bobby? Like, 
They don't, these they don't. little things happen where these split second decisions are made and it changes the course of their of history, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and um I come from a set of three brothers who came from Germany over to America and came to Pennsylvania and made the choice to make one of three different paths. They came down and were stayed in Pennsylvania. They came to Virginia or they came down to North Carolina. And so the brother that I'm descended from went to Virginia. And then I could have been from one of three brothers or they could have stayed in Germany. Who right. Knows? But right. Well, it's, and we even look at like, even like Ellis Island, like which, you know, for a bulk of my ancestors, they came over before the whole Ellis Island thing. But I know even on Ellis Island, I have friends uh, that have tried to do research of family that came through Ellis Island and they can't because they would, they would be forced to change their last name if it was, or if the person checking them in couldn't, if it was like a, you know, Eastern European name, they couldn't really spell it. They would change it. Like, like Wundstrom became Strom over time. It came S-T-R-O-M versus V-U-N-S-T-R-U-M. So over time, names do change. But, you know, all those people coming, I'm sure you've run into that when you look at like Ellis Island stuff, when people are coming through Ellis Island, especially from like Eastern Europe, where it's more of like a Russian name and they're moving them through quickly, almost like cattle. And they basically get assigned a new identity, don't they? Yeah. And what, what also gets really confusing is that people weren't necessarily required to have surnames if they were coming from another country until they became naturalized until mid 1800s. So I'm, I'm doing a story right now. Spoiler alert. Haven't finished it yet. But on the um, the Bunker brothers, Chang and Eng Bunker, um, who were conjoined twins who came over from Thailand, which was known as Siam, yeah. um, back from the early 1800s. But when they came over to America, they didn't have a last name. They didn't have a last name until they got married. And that was because they were forced to pick a last name. They were Chang and it's not A. Even, it's not even Bunker is not a, an Asian name, is it? At all. No, there isn't. Well, and they like came up with one because they had met a... There, were, there are different stories, but the, the one story that is predominant is that they had met a family in America that was their last name and that they adopted that name because that was out of appreciation for them. But that's not a name that they ever had before. They just kind yeah. of, because they were getting married and they said, you need to sign a marriage certificate, come up with a name. And that has, that's hard then when you don't know, that's like, I know a lot of black people in America have, um, like European last names and it's because they took the last name of their slave owners mm -hmm. when they were, um, when they were freed and they needed a surname, they would just take whatever there's there's Jefferson uh, Watson. There's a lot of Watsons, you know, um, just v Smith, you know, that's, that's not an African name. That's a, that's an English name. And that makes it hard then to trace back. That's the one good thing about family names is it makes it easier to trace it back to where it comes from. You know, it's interesting. My, my boyfriend has never really been super interested in history, but I, I'm such a history lover and his family, like I always call him the Prince of Florida because his family basically settled his, his great, 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 whatever grandfather, a man named Jesse Knight settled like Sarasota, Tampa, all that area. Like that's the Knights. There's like a, there's like a night train station in, in Tampa still like that whole area is his family. And, um, after, you know, he, through me, my excitement with history, you know, knowing parts, I mean, I don't know my dad's, obviously you're going to be looking at my dad's mother, but, um, he kind of got a little bit more interested in his family history. And, and, um, turns out one of his third cousins has one of the most, um, elaborate genealogy of the Knight family. And so he's been looking through it and it turns out he is a direct descendant of Sir Thomas More which is a huge, I mean, Sir Thomas More wrote Utopia. He was one of Henry VIII's like greatest ministers and he suffered a brutal execution because he refused to accept Anne Boleyn as the new queen. And I was saying to my, my boyfriend, I was like, isn't that wild that in your DNA, you carry the ancestral memory of Sir Thomas More? And that's what's interesting, too. Like, we carry that within our... And I'm sure we've all... Listen, if you're a white person, you come from Europe, Europeans like to execute people. 
<laughs> so chances are we got some some stake burning, some beheadings, <laughs> all in our DNA from past from past um, ancestors, and how wild that is, and how certain um, you know one of his through that line they became explorers. Where and that that was because they were wealthy aristocrats in in England, and they and that's how they ended up coming because they were all explorers and in the ocean and the sea. And I laugh at him because he's terrible at directions. I'm like, well, I think that skipped that skipped you because <laughs> he gets lost all the time. So so in the same damn city he's lived in for most of his life, he still gets lost. So I'm like, that would not have fared well for you, <laughs> but. You connect the dots and you look at these things and you're like, wow, you know, because Sir Thomas More was executed, it caused that whole issue with Henry VIII caused a lot of people to get nervous and start to leave, you know, over the next few generations, start to get get the heck out of England to, to America. So it's like, even though that was a brutal execution, if that had not have happened, would that not have triggered his descendants to get in the ocean and start exploring and get the hell out of England? I don't know. It's just wild how the story keeps unfolding and, and we're and we're unfolding it for our future generations, you know? So so yeah. So when was the first time, Bobby, like when you finally decided, like beyond your family, that you were gonna start looking into complete strangers, just going to graveyards and finding a complete stranger? When was the first time you thought, I wanna do that? I wanna find a grave that I'm drawn to at a cemetery and I want to make a commitment to that grave to tell that person's story. When was that, that time where you thought I'm going to do this? Do you remember it? I, I was probably young, honestly. Um, I was young and just finding tombs and just gravestones of just young people because it always just, it pulled at my heartstrings just to see people who had passed who were young, especially ones that would have the little, and I don't know if you, I'm sure you have them in the South too. Cause for, you're further, you're in the South. I'm in the South, but you're further South than I am. I'm in the deep South. I'm what they call the deep South. south. <laughs> I'm in the tip of the South, but you're in the deep South. Um, when they only have the 10 markers and they don't have the full stone to actually memorialize who the person is. And to me, I've always felt like I need to learn the story of who this person is. And is that for paupers? Is that what they did that for? Is paupers? Is there a reason behind that? Sometimes they just mark them because they haven't committed to putting the full stone in yet. But a lot of times people just don't come around to putting the stone in. But you're right. Sometimes it's the pauper and then they just don't commit. Um, mm -hmm. But I always th there's always the saying that it, when you stop saying that the, the, the people, people die twice. First, the time that they die, and then when you stop saying their name. And to me, when you stop learning about that person and you stop saying their name, you stop learning who they are, you stop remembering them. You stop learning about them. Kind of like when you do your deep dives, Bryce. When you stop doing that research and when you stop do it, learning their stories, they're not around anymore. And so it's it's kind of always been second nature to me. I never really put two and two together that it was really genealogy research, but I kind of stumbled across somebody and like, who is this person? Now with with the with this magical thing called the Google machine that is around now that wasn't around when we were younger, boy, does it make it so much easier because um, we had to go to this thing called the library back when yeah. we look things up. But, you know, it's, I still know the Dewey Decimal System. Listen, if the yes. crash, I still know that Dewey Decimal System. I can rock it at the Fulton County <laughs> Library. But it's like it's fire, fire. <laughs> I um, you know, I see it's it's true because if I if we didn't have the internet today, even with my channel, I would not be able to put up as many videos as frequently as I do because I would literally have to go to the library and have to pull books, and if a book was checked out, I'd have to wait for it. So it does make it a lot easier now that everything is scanned and put on the internet. I can just look and find it, you know, within a certain amount of minutes what what I'm looking for. But um, but yeah, you know, it's interesting too, Bobby. When we were doing our course, we had awesome Laura. Um, on the channel. She was from Australia. And something I kind of figured out, and I don't know if this is more of an American thing or if this is a Southern American thing. We do our graveyards a little bit differently, don't we? Apparently. Our graveyards, you know, it's interesting. When I was covering, when I first opened my channel, I, I talked a lot about Savannah, Georgia. I have a whole playlist called Scandalous Savannah. And I remember 
doing stories about certain graveyards in Savannah and they had to like readjust laws because at one point during the settlement time, the olden days, they couldn't bury you unless you're on hollowed ground. Well, hollowed ground is ground that's owned by the property of a church. And there wasn't, and there was an issue. So we have these like beautiful cemeteries connected to churches, but we also have family cemeteries all over the South. I mean, there's a Bryce family cemetery up in South Carolina. I'm sure down in Quitman, there's a Bennett family cemetery somewhere. And it would be like on people's properties would be these cemeteries. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think Laura was pretty fascinated about that, that it's part of our kind of our culture, these cemeteries. You know, I've talked about Oakland Cemetery here in, in Atlanta, where it was a social place for people. To, it's still a social place. They have concerts out there all the time. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, Bobby, for our, our, our friends from overseas who are watching this, like how, the cultural aspect of cemeteries, especially in the southern part of the United States? Yes, yeah, cemeteries are huge, especially the further south you go. It's people have parties in yeah. cemeteries. Um, burial, th their burial traditions are big. Nolens is Nolens. huge. Nolens, I have to say it right. Nolens. Nolens, yeah. Um, I mean, people will have celebrations, they will have bands, it's it's a big deal. Um, but people will have family cemeteries that is a larger plot of land, kind of an extension of their own land in their home, and it's kind of their backyard, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they just kind of name it, um, like McGrady Family Cemetery. It would be just kind of my backyard, and I would bury my husband, my son, my daughter i don't have, i'm just yeah I'm grandma sorry. grandpa it's it's all my aunt martha they would all be buried in the backyard and as the family would grow they would just all be buried in the backyard and sometimes there's fence around it sometimes there isn't people just come randomly stop by and pay their respects um as i drove through wheat my husband and i went on vacation earlier this year and we drove through uh west virginia part of virginia um we were through different states. We've just randomly just would see in people's backyards, just graveyards. And of course I wanted to go visit. He would not allow me to just randomly knock on people's doors because he thought I would get shot. But so, but that just, it's just how people are. They just have family graveyard. That's very yeah. normal down here. And I will say, even like I've covered the werewolf of Georgia, she's buried in the Owens family cemetery. That's her mother's family. And so, and they've had to actually like tell you because people keep wanting to come to her grave. Like you will get shot if, if you trespass. It's still, it's still considered private property. Again, there's, there's the Bryce family cemetery, which is my great, 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 whatever up in South Carolina. It's all his, you know, his generation, a couple of generations buried there. And, and it's fascinating. I love New Orleans though, you guys, if you ever go to Nolans, and I'll say that it is like nails on a chalkboard when I hear people say New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, it's, that's not how you say it. Come on, no. Yankees, it's not how you say it. It's New Orleans. Have some respect. Have some respect for the city. It's New Orleans. At least just say New Orleans. Don't say New Orleans. It's not how you say it. Anyway, um, but because New Orleans, it is below sea level, they had a problem when they were burying their dead because anytime um, a hurricane came or flooding came, they would, it would, the bodies would come up out of the grave and there goes grandma just floating down the road, you know? So they had to start making more, you go in there, they're up above the ground, like in cement to keep the bodies there. And in, in the coast of South Carolina and Savannah, that area, if a body is buried because of the sand in the low country, you bury, you know, John Proctor Smith of 1776 that you bury and you try to dig him up in 2024, he's not going to be there anymore because the sand moves the bodies. It moves them. So where their plot is, they get moved underground. It's very, people will find in that area, if they're doing renovations on their basement, they'll find like skeletons from, that have moved, you know, in, in a casket that have moved. And um, it's, it's um, I also will say too, something we do down here in the South that, I think I think some other cultures do this as well, but I know ours comes from like the eccentric because the South is very eccentric, as I've said. You know, we think of it as the Bible Belt, but it's very eccentric because we have the South is its own entity. It, it's humid. It breathes. It's, it's its own character. Like the South is its own character, right? And so you have this combination of these Protestant faiths, not not many Catholics, Protestant faiths, um, voodoo, hoodoo. 
are inter intertwined with that as well as Native American faiths. Well, it's very common, isn't it, uh, Bobby, to go to cemeteries and see offerings on graves. Oh yeah, all the time. And it's yeah. and it's very off the wall stuff too. Mm -hmm. You don't just see typical flowers. I mean, you would, and then that's what you would assume. It's just flowers yeah. and just big. You see trinkets, mm -hmm. you see beer cans, you see w wild altar type things. Yeah. I saw one built up, um, it was right around Halloween and I'm assuming that it was, it was the person's favorite holiday. Um, and she had passed when she was just in her young 20s. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I loved how they did it. Um, and they had it completely decorated for Halloween. They had decorations. They had the cobwebs up. They had like a trick or treat thing going on. They had, I mean, they had everything. Like, I mean, it was just completely ornate. Yeah. It That's how shocking is it down here in the South though, when you see that, like it's more shocking to me when I go to Southern graves to not see that. And we're talking, this isn't culturally specific to a certain race. Like white people do this, black people do this. Anybody from the South is going to do this, leaving, and it's, it is, it becomes an altar. It's almost like how the, in, in Asian cultures, they venerate their ancestors. You know, they leave stuff. That's kind of what we're doing too. Yeah, you'll see, um, you'll see toys for kids left at the grave and you don't touch that shit. Like, you know, if you're from the South, you don't touch that. Like all kids know, like if there is a teddy bear on a grave, do you don't fucking touch that? Like that is for the spirit of the person. Like that is what people do. Um, there's, co you, people leave a lot of coins. There's a significant, I can't remember what the significance is to the coins. Um, even if you go to Oakland cemetery here in Atlanta, they have a lot of, a few famous people are buried there. Um, uh, Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, but there's a, a Bobby Jones. Was that the golfer? I don't yeah. know the sports person. He's buried there. And so if you go to his grave, there are like piles and piles of golf balls people leave as an offering to his grave. Um, and that's so common. It is so common. People just, um, yeah, I, it's funny because I don't even think about flowers being an offering because that's just so normal. But no, it's it's way more than that here in the South is to really, really leave. Yeah. Alcohol. You'll be in like a church cemetery and people will have a bottle of vodka up on a grave for somebody and the, the church won't touch it. It's, it's for that spirit, you know, and it's, it's sometimes people leave some really nice stuff, like expensive stuff on the grave for their departed loved ones. I and love the painted rock just yeah. as an experiment on my grandmother's grave, probably eight months ago, just to see, I just wanted to see, I went back um, for the Reese Across America event The for the, and we talked about on my channel. Um, so I went back this past weekend. Rock was still there. Yeah. You people. And there's weather. We've had snow since then. Still there. Not touched. You know, it's interesting. It's like I, I've worked with people who are street artists before in a lifetime before YouTube. And with even with graf graffiti artists, basically, there's even like laws within their little criminal organization where they will only tag new buildings. Mm -hmm. They will not touch historic buildings or graves. They will not touch it. And if they find out somebody else has been tagging historic buildings or graves, it is like gang warfare at that point. Like you don't fuck with graves or old buildings. And so that is, it just, so, so it doesn't shock me that that rock was still there because people, even all, all socioeconomic backgrounds in the United, in the Southern United States know not to touch that, you know, no, no, not that that is a very sacred thing to leave for your departed loved one. And so that doesn't surprise me that even, even the hooliganist of hooligans would be like, oh, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma will go come haunt me if I touch that. So <laughs> probably would, but you know. <laughs> so it's it's um yeah, it's it's such a southern thing, a southern culture here to have very graveyards have personality here. They have personalities. Um uh, and I always say to people, like, I never feel like graveyards are super haunted anyway. Like I there are some that are, but I always feel like like if you're gonna die, like where are you gonna haunt? You're not gonna haunt the graveyard. You know, you're going to go back to your house or be with your family. Um, but so they, they always feel pretty good to me, graveyards, for the most part. You know, it's it's, um, you know, if you go deeper into the South, they do do like the voodoo culture does do rituals out there. Not 
necessarily bad ones, but they need certain graves from consecrated ground or from ground where someone's like a certain dirt. Like if you just get a little dirt, you know, and so you see that going on sometimes. It's, it's just a very important part of our of our culture. And I was telling you just to kind of give a little spoiler alert to um, as well. You know, I just asked Bobby before we went on camera, you know, we've talked a lot about Appalachia. And, and um, if you guys join me on Gnostic TV with, with uh, Jessica Jones, the cryptic huntress, she remote viewed. An, an issue that happened in Appalachian, we started talking about certain certain parts of Appalachian. I'm at the base of it. And so we're going to be going up there to the area we go hiking soon. And I was telling you, Bobby, like, there are these, like, desolate roads. Like, no one goes back there. And you go on these hiking trails, and you'll just stumble upon an old family graveyard. That's just there. It's just there. And I told Bobby, I'm going to take some pictures and send them to her of these very old family graveyards. Now, I don't think people are allowed to do family graveyards anymore, are they, Bobby? Is that against the law now to bury someone on your property? I think if you can get permits, maybe. Yeah. I'm more into it. Which is kind of sad. Like, I feel like maybe that's like the, the, the Republican in me where I'm like, back off government. <laughs> Oh no, my internet's freezing again. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you. Okay, the fucking Mercury retrograde. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. There. I'm good. 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 Yeah. Because I guess. I guess it's not. I guess when most people bury bodies on their property, it's because they just murdered someone. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, they don't even really like you bury your dog on your property anymore. To be honest. So. Oh really? Yeah. Um, I mean, I want to be cremated. I want. To, I don't want to be buried. I want to be cremated. And I know, like, my sister's pets have passed away. They're cremated. And so you can take them with you everywhere you move, you know? So, um, yeah. But it's... So, Bobby, what else are you looking for? What else is coming up on your channel? Um, like I said, I'm doing a deep dive right now. I'm learning about um, Changanang Bunker um, because there is actually a little bit of family relation to them. Um not like you would think they are. So you'll have to wait until that story is done. That's going to be fascinating, girl, because you've told me a little bit about that. That is some scandalous shit, y'all. Like, we think of the past as being all prim and proper. Uh-uh, honey. They were not prim and proper, were they? Mm -hmm. They were having fun. Let's just put it that way. They were yeah. making some babies in very weird ways. Yeah. Um, and I actually, like you, actually am also part of Gnostic as well. So you will actually see me on Gnostic. More to be determined on that, too. So that's exciting. So you'll see me coming up with that. Now, Bobby, if there's somebody watching right now that really wants to hire you to do like a look into their genealogy, is that a possibility? That is a possibility. I'm exploring that as well. And if there's anybody that has a crazy family relative that they would like me to look a little bit into as well for a story on my channel, um, I will put my give you yeah, I will give you my email address so that you can put that in your links so that someone I'm telling you guys, I contacted Bobby and I said, girl, I just found out that my great great grandfather is haunting the shit out of some buildings on equipment, Georgia. I don't know how to feel about it. I stumbled upon it on YouTube. Apparently people are making YouTube videos about him. I, I kind of feel like I karmically need to go down there and tell him to move on. <laughs> <laughs> but price, have you seen this place i don't know if you should do that or not well, i know one place is like an old log house but it's like the paul i don't want to I'll, i'm going to talk to my i'm still hesitant about saying their last name <laughs> mainly because i'm slightly afraid of this family <laughs> even though it's my family it's my grandmama's family they were very powerful weren't they bobby they were they yes yes they were very, very powerful people, and there's still some of them down in that area of equipment in Valdosta, Georgia. So I'm not, I'll have to see. I mean, maybe I can say there. Anyway, my grandmother was sweet as can be, though. She was awesome. But, um, but you know, I was telling Bobby, and that's a good thing because with, with this, I knew so much about my mom's family. Like my mom's family, we because Bryce, the family name, that's my mom's main name, the Bryce's of South Carolina, the Williams Bryce football stadium. I knew so much about them. And both of my mom's parents come from the low country where my dad's dad comes from Tennessee. My dad's mom comes from South Georgia. So it, it was, there was more there in South Carolina for us. And we would go there. And I, I do think with your mom's family and, and a lot of cases, not every case, but a lot of cases, I do think you do end up spending more time with your mom's family because a daughter is a daughter for the rest of your life. A son is a son until he takes a wife. 
Um, and so I grew up with my cousins, like brothers and sisters, and my dad's family, not so much. But I remember my dad's, knowing my dad's mom's family were like super prominent in South Georgia, but I never really thought much about it. And then I said, Bobby, I said, I have an idea. I just found out my great, great grandfather is like haunting some places. Do you, and you even said, girl, I've already been looking or something. You were like, there's some scandals there. <laughs> That's why I was like, Bryce, I don't know if you want to go there or not. Ooh. Oh, I know. I, I want to I want to learn. Well, it's so funny. You, we signed on. I'll just give you guys a teaser. I've told, I think I've told this story on air before. My dad's mom, my grandmother, Marianne, I loved her. She, she was the one who I always tell this story. She was the one that hit, hid books on reincarnation under the bed for my grandfather. So she was very open-minded. She loved the fact that I was going to India she she went to college she went to undergrad graduated valedictorian of her university class in a time when women did not really go to school and she ended up getting her master's very smart woman she joined the rotary club as the only woman like she was very like pantsuit nation before hillary clinton came around and she had told us when we were little that the reason why she decided to go to university is because she wanted to find a husband she had told us because she had her father, her uncle, and two aunts. And she, her aunts never got, well, one of her aunts got married really later in life, but they were never, when she was, they were never married. They were, they were, um, what, what are they called? Spinsters? Spinsters? You know, that's the name back then. But they were very well educated themselves and they were marched in the women's suffrage movement and they were very, you know, oh. And so my grandmother, though, she was very paranoid as a little kid that if she stayed in Quitman, in the Valdosta area, she would never meet a man because her aunts didn't meet men. And so that's why she went to university. She didn't, I mean, she graduated valedictorian, but she really went with the intention of, of finding a husband, which she did. Thank God she found my grandfather. But, um, I mean, I, I think I was, it was after I was finished with university, I was living in LA and I remember being in her kitchen and I remember her saying, Oh my God, I just realized something. <laughs> She's like, I think my aunts were lesbians. <laughs> it's like her whole life flashed before her eyes and all the choices that she had made was based on this idea that she thought her aunts just couldn't find a husband. And then she realized, <laughs> all of a sudden, like 80 years old, she realized <laughs> she didn't have to go to university. That wasn't necessary. <laughs> All she had to do was go to the club. All she had to do, and we're not, I mean, they were that prominent, weren't they, that she could have found a husband like that, couldn't she have, down there? Because they were that prominent. So, but I'm like, I'm really glad you did go, Grandma, because that's how you met Granddad. Because <laughs> he was from Knoxville, Tennessee. There was no way she was going to meet him otherwise. But, yeah, it's interesting, though. It's kind of funny because you, you, and I think we all have that, don't we, Bobby? We have certain family lines that we know a lot about, and then certain ones we know nothing about. And that's yeah. history, isn't it? Yeah. Like I said, I still am learning about the great grandmother that I don't know about. My mom's father's mother, whose first name was not on her on the death certificate. I'm still learning about her and her whole side of the family, which is a complete mystery to me. That was what, what got me into genealogy research in the first place was to learn about this whole missing part of me. And, it, and that was to me was I, that's ma makes me, me. Yeah. And I want to learn who me is and I'm not yeah. going to know who me is until I learn about this missing piece. And it, the, these are the, this is what makes you who you are. Yeah. So every day, but learning about this stuff is just fascinating the good the bad and the ugly it's all a part of you it's all a part of of you the mystery of who you are through your dna yeah. it's crazy even looking at the physicality of your dna i have a cousin who's a redhead and no the only redhead in our family was my great grandfather my grandmother my mom's mom's dad and it had skipped multiple generations and it popped up on one of my cousins and so even like little parts of your dna there's little parts of you you might look at an old picture and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, I, I see, I see my sister in this picture, or I see my cousin in this picture, or I see my kid in this picture of this DNA that's mushing together as it runs down the lines and certain things are popping out. 
I mean, I, 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 with the, with the family line you're looking into, you know, I look at old pictures of people and there's always that joke, like my boyfriend's dad will say, so you get, you get, you go back enough and you can't figure out who's grandma and who's grandpa. Cause they, you know, they don't look like they really know. But I was even, I, we were laughing offline. Like my grandmother's family, they were, they were really good looking. Like I looked at my great uncle, a guy named Spence, who I think might've been gay too, but I don't know. And I'm like, damn, he's, he was hot. I'm like, He's probably with gay. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good looking family. And and no one ever talked about this growing up because we didn't live. I think too, when you don't live in the area, when you're not in the area where these things, these stories happened, which is a lot of people, you know, we don't live in the, like I didn't grow up in the area that my root family roots are. You know, I have, I have that one parent, grandparent who's from South, South Georgia, pretty much Florida. It's so close to the Florida border. Um, and then everyone else was not from Georgia. So I'm first generation. I mean, I wasn't even born in Georgia, so I don't even know if I'm technically first generation, you know? So it's, it's, you, you don't, and when you don't grow up with that around you, and then if you have like my mom's parents, and that might be why, that might be another reason why that I knew about more about my mom's family because her parents died so young. So it could have been that my mother was keeping those stories alive because everyone died. And so it was up to them to, to tell us the stories about, our lineage. Um, and that, that was very important uh, that my, my family knew that we were from the low country, that we were Geechee, that we were not Georgian. We just lived in Georgia, but we were actually Geechee. That's, a, that's another term for people from the low country. And all that, that entails, all that, that, apply, that, um, that comes, that applies to that. And so I think too, that that's part of it. And as you said, Bobby, like one of your brothers went one state, one went another state, one went another state. So you start to separate you know, and it's, it's kind of fun too. I mean, I think about like 23 and me and ancestry.com, like how many people have discovered a cousin they didn't know about or simply they didn't know about because of DNA testing, you know, and how you probably find some of that stuff in your own research. Like, Ooh, what was happening here? <laughs> um, what secret were they keeping? The secret didn't go to the grave, did it? <laughs> No, that was interesting because I found out that my grandfather was married before my grandmother and nobody ever talked about this in my family. And I, I, I was, I had to break that to my mother. I didn't know if my mother knew or not. Now she did, but I had to have that difficult conversation with my mother. And I say, do you know that he, she's like, oh yeah, we knew we didn't. And I'm like, well, why didn't anybody ever tell me? Yeah. you all? have had that conversation with me so that I didn't have to break it to you first of he was married before and why did I find this out in an ancestry record and why didn't anybody tell me that he was married for my grandmother very awkward conversation that the same the exact same thing thing happened to my boyfriend's mom and I can't remember if it was her mom or her grandmother because she's really into doing the genealogy and um her dad, my boyfriend's grandfather, so she's full on her mom's side, full on Floridian with the Knight family, but her dad fled Poland before World War II. So there's a lot, she's got a lot of Polish. And so she got into that and she found it was, it was either her mom or grandma had been married before the person that was the, the father of the family, you know, and, um, and it was like figuring out it was a very quick wedding. Like it got an old, like what, what's the story there? Like, but no one talked about this. This was a total secret and it wasn't revealed until generations later when my boyfriend's mom was actually researching and came across this marriage certificate, you know? And of course all the, all the, all the suspects are long gone. So <laughs> it's speculation at this point. There's no one to act like, who, what happened? Like, what happened here? Did she marry a boy from the wrong end of the, of the railroad tracks and the parents got pissed and caused the divorce? You know, even in that, in that time in history, there were certain laws about different interracial marriages. Like, was that something, I mean, there's all these questions. We don't know who this person was. And so it's, it's made for um, interesting family conversations about, and then you start to look at people differently. Like when you have this idea of your grandma, your dad, your grandma sitting there knitting and this sweet lady. And then you look into the, their history and you realize there's a whole life here of, of 
adventures and mistakes and scandals and good stuff and achievements and accomplishments and you know how sad it is that we we take that for granted that we don't talk we don't ask the people while, while they're around to tell us more about their life you know so all right bobby well once again this has been so fun i cannot wait to have you back and it's fine we'll we'll um we'll air all the dirty laundry <laughs> my grandmother's no longer alive and you know what knowing my grandmother she probably would find it very fascinating and she probably would be very supportive of an episode on her family line and i don't think she would shy away from the icky parts either um so you know i, I think she would actually be very interested because she was not you know she uh she tried to teach me to meditate when i was eight like she was always i feel like i have a lot of her spirit in me anyway out of all of my family was concerned when I started traveling to India because of, you know, it's India and I had tra already traveled the world, but this was different. And my grandmother would like call me into the kitchen and be like, what did you learn? Teach me what you learned. I want to learn it. Teach me. So she was very open minded. And so I don't think that she would be too embarrassed or too. Um, I think she would find it very scandalous and very interesting learning more about uh, her family history. So I'm gonna ask you guys, like, listen, y'all, I'm still, I still have a little bit of PTSD after learning that there's some haunted land and people have done YouTube with my family. So if you guys had that experience, like let Bobby know, like if you know that there is a house somewhere, wherever you are in the world that's allegedly haunted by one of your ancestors, like how fucking weird is that? Like, it's just so weird to me. <laughs> um, I seriously think karmically I got to go down there and be like, listen, you can't scare me because I'm one of your offsprings. And you need to tell them to stop. Stop. Tell them just to let it go. Let it go. Let it, I think one of the places. Tell them to listen, was, Linda. Listen, listen Linda. Linda. He's going to be pissed, though, because I got tattoos and I have a nose piercing. So <laughs> And I live with a man. <gasps> oh, I live with a man. <laughs> I'll be nice. I'll go and be like, listen. I think his name was Stanley. I mean, listen, Stanley. <laughs> listen, Stanley. Listen, Stanley. Listen. My sister's got kids, so the line is continuing. <laughs> but we've got to have a talk. Times <laughs> have changed, Stanley. Times have changed. Walk into the light, my friend. Walk into the light. If you want to make your your descendants happy well i mean i think one of the place he haunts is actually the house i think i sent you a picture of the house i think it's like a, fl a flower shop now but it's the house that my grandfather my great-grandfather grew up in it was his i think a father still haunts that place i'd be like you gotta go my friend like do you want to reincarnate or not like you gotta go <laughs> you had your fun when you were living didn't he bobby he had his fun when he was living. <laughs> He's shown up to him. He had his fun. Now he's going to have to pay the piper. He's going to have to go pay the piper now for that fun he had. Oh, so, so, so you guys, I, I hope, I hope Bobby with that episode coming up, that it will help people feel more comfortable looking into their own history line. And know we've all got, we've got the good, we got the bad, we got the ugly, don't we? All of, all of us. And that's what makes life beautiful is that it's messy, isn't it? It is. It's messy. Well, Bobby, I'm so thank you for coming on today. I just think I like I said, guys, like I was like, damn it, that's such a good idea. When she said what she wanted to do for her content, I was like, how clever is that? So um, yes, I will put your email address down in the description box below. So if you guys want to either send Bobby ideas, or if maybe you want to hire her to do a deep dive into your family offline so that you, you know, if you don't if you want to keep that private. Um, absolutely. Just reach out to Bobby and please go subscribe to your channel, guys. I, I'm just so excited for the more and more content that you're going to be producing and also a uh, Gnostic TV. Also look into that as well with, with Bobby. And, um, this is just fantastic. Thank you so much, Bobby, for doing this. First of all, for being the person to be like, hold my beer, guys, I'm going to go do this for being a fellow Nancy Drewer and being, being nosy <laughs> like I am <laughs> and sharing your research with the world. Thank you. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks again for having me on today. Absolutely. I can't wait to have you back. 
We will talk to you guys soon, guys. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, before I forget, one more announcement. I know I've been announcing this, but until January 2nd, for the first 250 people to make this purchase, Gnostic TV is going to be available for 12 months. If when for $50, I'm not saying this right. It's Mercury Retrograde. My words are getting tied. At checkout, if you follow the link below and at checkout, you put Shala for a discount code, you can get 12 months of Gnostic TV for only $50. That's it. $50, 12 months of Gnostic TV. So you guys, that's going to be in the description box below. It's for the first 250 people to make that purchase. We also have gift cards available on Gnostic TV. If you want to gift somebody as a year subscription, you can use that discount code to gift somebody in your life that year subscription to Gnostic TV, but only for the first 250 people. So links below, you guys. All right. I hope you guys all have a very Merry Christmas. And Bobby and I will see you all very soon. Bye, guys.